Yes, and we're back. I hope you're enjoying the film. We're, we're here at the Pensacola Paracon still. Uh, we're here with Leanne Wilbur. Uh, Leanne may look familiar to you. You've probably seen her on various television networks, Travel Channel, History Channel, maybe. Cops. No, not Cops or America's Most Wanted, that's you. Um, she, she's a, she actually owns a very special residence um, that's now a bed and breakfast, but Leanne, would you like to tell everyone where you live? I live in Ball River, Massachusetts. At 92 Second Street, I have a little house called the Lizzie Borden House. Um, wow. You've not heard of it back in 1892. It is site of the infamous murders of Mr. and Mrs. Borden. Their 32 year old daughter, Lizzie, was accused and acquitted of all charges. And it is now a unusual bed and breakfast for those who dare to spend the evening with us. All right. And if, and if you don't remember what. You're next. I'm next. Both. If you can't recall what Leanne just said, there's a, there's a little poem that goes something like... Uh, Lizzie Borden took an axe, gave her mother 40 wax, and when she saw what she had done, she gave her father 40 wax. Okay, so here's the ultimate question about this. And we'll talk about the ghosts in a minute, because obviously this house is haunted, and that's why you should probably go and stay there, because you, you may have a, you know, a run-in with somebody from the, the supernatural paranormal world. But, so was Lizzie, uh, was she guilty? Well, she was acquitted of all charges after her 13-day trial, after, of course, spending 10 months in jail waiting for the trial, but she was acquitted. So it's never been proven that she committed the crimes, but many people believe that she is the guilty party. And how do you feel? Or is that going to get you in trouble when you get back home? No, she did it. She did it. And that Lizzie was a looker, too. Look her up online. Meow. Yeah. All right. So... In your house, yes. what goes on? Because we know that, uh, uh, well, people that don't know the story, Mr. Borden was murdered downstairs on the couch. Yes. Um, and Mrs. Borden mar uh, married. Miss <laughs> Lizzie was never married. That's another story altogether. But her mother was murdered upstairs, right? Her stepmother. Stepmother mar murdered upstairs. Yes. So what, what happens in the house itself that now that we, is, is there more like interaction with ghosts or do we have more of like a replay of what events that happened in the past or no it's more interaction I, it doesn't feel to be stuck in time at all it's it's very um see i'm not a paranormal investigator so i don't know all the big words and terminology but it's uh it's very interactive they're very conscious mm. and it, it's kind of like having a roommate you just never see you just keep bumping into them every once in a while they don't scare me. I've had my incidences with them. I've had things move on me in the house. I'll put something down and be somewhere else a little later on. I'll hear footsteps on the floor above me or in the next room when I know I'm alone in the house. Traditional cold spots, the unusual smells in the house. That was me. Oh, was it you? Okay, I know who to blame next time. Hey, so, Mr. So, Mr. Meaty. So what was the first thing that you actually experienced in the house, and did that actually shock you? It is a shock the first time you actually have an experience, and it was my first week there. We bought the house in June, seven years ago, and so it's relatively still warm outside, and I had gone down to the basement and to do some laundry, and I walked off the bottom stair to head towards the laundry room, and it immediately felt like I walked into a walk-in freezer. And a couple of steps later, I walked out of that feeling, and as soon as I did, it felt like somebody ran their finger down my back. That was a little unnerving. So I just turned around, went back up the stairs, and did what any rational person would do. I called one of my employees who was in the other room and said, I need some help with the laundry. <laughs> Come down with me. And so who do you think is there? Do you think it's Mr. and Mrs. Borden that are still in the house? Definitely. Uh, have, they, have they communicated that to people, or...? I mean, I don't know who's been in the house. I know, I know. Obviously, you know, most of the paranormal teams on television have been there now. Yes. It's a very, a very, very popular location because, obviously, with the history. I mean, mm -hmm. the Lizzie Borden trial was kind of the OJ of its day. You know, I mean, such a huge trial and such a famous case in American history. Um, so, do they have they communicated with people? Do you get people saying, "Oh, it's Mrs. Borden" or "Oh, it's Mr. Borden"? Not directly, uh, but I interacted with them for so long now that I can sort of sense which one it is and when it is. Mr. Borden definitely has a specific feel to him, and I know he's not going to leave the house because he paid a lot of money for that house. <laughs> he's going to get every penny's worth out of it, whether he's <laughs> dead or not. Uh, Mrs. Borden, I've had a couple of interactions with her, and uh, I, one specific one happened a couple of years ago. I was in the John Morse room, 
uh, the room where she was murdered. Uh, we call it the John Morse room because the night before the murders, Lizzie and Emma's Uncle John, who was the brother of Sarah Borden, Mr. Borden's first wife, had spent the night in that room. So Mrs. Borden went up to change the sheets and make up the bed, and that's where the murderer found her. Mm. And her body was found between the bed and the dresser in that room. And she was facing her murderer when he attacked. Her first blow was to the side of the face here, and then when she went forward, the killer struck her on the side of the head. So we know she saw her attack coming at her. And uh, I was in the room making up the bed, and was tucking in the end sheet at the end of the bed, and leaning over, and all of a sudden it got very hard for me to breathe. And I pushed myself up off the end of the bed, up off the end of the bed to catch my breath. And as soon as I did, it felt like somebody punched me in the chest. Nope. And um, my legs went out from underneath me, and before I hit the floor, I was sobbing. I was just crying, mm. and my first thought was just grief, overwhelming sadness. And I truly believe that was Mrs. Borden. Wow. Because I don't know anybody else who would have lived in that house who would have been that depressed. I mean, she lived with her stepdaughters who hated her. Mm. And she was a homebody. Her only social life was her family who lived two streets over. Her entire life took, took place within three blocks. So I don't know anybody else who would have been that sad in that house. Okay. So I truly believe that was her. Wow. So after the murders occurred, what happened to Lizzie? Uh, Lizzie was acquitted and uh, she moved back to the Second Street house very briefly. Her sister continued to live at the house during the trial, her older sister Emma. And after the trial and after her acquittal, uh, she and her sister started looking immediately for new residents and they moved less than a mile away from the murder site, up to French Street, up in the Highlands. And she and her sister lived together till 1905 when her sister moved out, stating her sister had become unbearable to live with any longer. Okay. So we don't know if Emma actually knew the truth. Maybe she found out the truth and couldn't, couldn't deal, deal with, with that. And, and she moved to New Market, New Hampshire at the end of her life. That's where she lived. Thanks, Leanne, for taking the time to talk to us. You're very welcome, Dad. And why don't you guys get back to the movie here on Nightmare TV?